Oh, right, so bun this bun. is another fine vintage. <laughs> yeah, this was on PBE, I think. Um, okay, yesterday. Gotcha. And it's like the like fine vintage duelist, but now it's it's the new duelists, and the new melee is yeah. down. And it's also support anvil, so it's kind of like double stacking up. Oh. Hey, I feel like uh, I always love the support anvil opener with, with fine vintage. Getting that extra support item feels insane. Like going from like five items to six items on your mm -hmm. carry is such a big diff. I, uh, you know, funny enough, you remember that, that duelist game we talked about a while ago where it, we, the conclusion we came to is that the, the way you'd play Lisa and fine vintage was that you would keep the components that are good and just like let the bad ones reforge as they come. I've been using that a lot this set mm -hmm. my my general philosophy towards fine vintage and it's felt really good to do that um just like like keeping all the components yeah. i want and then like letting any any crappy ones you know sit there until i find something to kill them with feels really 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 nice yeah i agree one thing i've like keep on making a mistake on is i'm slamming titans and then it ends up on like gwen but i keep on forgetting that, that they nerf the ap scaling yeah. on that I definitely have really the Titans Gwen today, too. <laughs> it does feel one. weird. Yeah. <laughs> it definitely, yeah, I agree. It definitely feels, uh, like, Titans is such an awkward thing to slam right now, I feel like, because, like, one of the things you you want to hit in that situation is Gwen, and you can't really not put it on her if you hit it, right? It just gets, it gets very awkward very quickly. I think Warwick is a great Titans yeah. holder, though. I so mean, then I was even, sorry, yeah. go ahead. I guess I was thinking be because of that point exactly, like whether it's worth slamming the Titans, kind of like we discussed, or just turn it into a support item because it's not as flexible. <laughs> I think you could totally riddle work from this spot as well, for what it's worth. Oh. I think uh, like low That's key, Warwick 3 is actually kind of a crank. If you ever, uh, ever get Vampiric Scepter, <laughs> guy right. becomes a monster. But I, I think even with just normal items, it War three can do decently. It's one of those things like you shouldn't. I think like like not leveling here, for example, is good because if you see some more war. Not like you're doing this because you could see more warworks, but like it is something to keep in mind that you could be seeing more warworks, and that might be a reason to potentially hold off. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I, I think uh, honestly, I think there's not a ton of direction for you right now. Like this is a spot where you, you definitely do that as well. That that works too if you want to play for a higher cost stuff. I think like sitting on the warwork is also fine, and just seeing if you hit more by the end of the stage. Um, Neela is cool too. I'm assuming the Neela is that you want to play for some higher cost stuff, or or I mean, I guess Titan's Neela is actually probably pretty good, so that that would probably work as well. But it's Warwick, you usually want like Rage Blade QSS, right? And like yeah, I think it's Rage Blade BT. QSS Titans. Yeah, I guess you can go you can go um, BT as well. And he does have a lot of built-in healing if you get the AP. I guess the AP on Titans isn't super good though, so kind of hit or miss. I, I think with Fine Vintage you can get away with it though, because you can hit like Knights of Al and stuff, right? Would you have taken a three cost there and just cook the item or take the Hodge? Uh, I think Hodge is, is good enough to take for sure. I think you definitely want, I mean, so you are a three loss, right? So there's a, there's kind of a, a, a double thing here where it's not bad to take the Hodge because you want to, like, getting the healing item with the Titans is really important for how you're trying to play the game, but it's also pretty good to get the Reforge. I'd say in general, getting the, the healing item is better because again, at the end of the day, this is a silver augment and it's okay to not try to get like insane value out of it immediately. Right. I do think, um, you have to realize uh, taking that, you have to realize that you are probably going to win and you have to be okay with that. If, I mean, if you have a plan, you know, if you feel like the Nila two, if you're going to like roll for Nila two and like try to get really strong from there and then like win up the rest of the stage, I think that's really fine, but I wouldn't force it super hard because now you're in like a slightly awkward spot econ wise right where like you're your three loss one win one loss so you're not making a ton of money you don't need to necessarily re because you can take that hodge and you can not refor you cannot slam it and also not look for the reforge and just play it out right um and just see if you lose that fight i think that's probably the best thing because even though you don't necessarily want to reforge it immediately you do want to make sure you're keeping your loss streak there if possible going to win is fine too though i mean like like you know, three loss. Oh, sorry, your three loss, two win. Not not three loss, one win, one loss. This is actually better than I thought. But um, yeah, I mean, b b both work for sure. I would definitely reforge this. I know yeah. quick love is useful here, but yeah, this, this definitely seems like a solid reforge. So from this spot, what are you thinking in terms of potential things you can play? 
Um, in my head, it was just I'm I'm going Gwen Fiora like by default, and if I happen to natural a bunch of Nilas, then I could consider Nila Kali reroll. Um, gotcha. I feel like Olaf just hasn't been very good. Yeah, I think it It'd has to do other, with the uh... out, or if I like play for Briar, but like that's more like if I get lucky. Gotcha. Or Camille. I think. I do think Vine Vintage is one of those things where, like, like Vine Vintage is one of the things that enables Olaf. So if you find a spot for Olaf, you find, like, another thing that enables Olaf, right? Like, something uh, very selfish in terms of augment power. Um, something that says, like, this unit gets way... Like, Silver Augment, right? That says, like, this unit gets more HP and damage amp or something along the lines of, like... Even, like, Unify can be decent here, but... Um, I'm trying to think of, like, some gold augments that would be more selfish, but I, maybe, like, an or Artifact or something would be an example of that. But you definitely can think of, of Olaf here, and I think you definitely have to be considering it as well, just because, you know, you never know. If you might just roll down on 8 and hit no Gwens and no Fioras, and you have to have Olaf as that extra out. And so playing around that as well is definitely ideal. Um, I think Gwens... So the problem... Yeah, this is a weird problem, and I, I'm... I'm Pause if you're gonna hit Gwen this game because it's always the most awkward. It, like it always happens when you slam Titans is that you hit Gwen before you hit Fiora. At least to me, every single <laughs> <Yeah>. time. Um, <laughs> and then it just feels really weird. And so the, the problem is really that like it's hard to find these mid game carries for. I think like, it's really hard actually to find like 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 for example, there's no three star or no three cost carry really that holds Titans. Right? Am I crazy? I want to look at the units. I don't think there's any three cost that holds Titans. Uh, Sounds about right. Like Quay, the closest Jinx, I think of would be like Cat, uh, maybe Mordekaiser, but he's AP. Wukong as well, maybe, right? Yeah, oh, Mord. no, no, Hecarim. Hecarim. Hecarim, yeah, sorry. He's probably the only guy who holds Titans. Right, because I'm looking at the other ones like Nico, Shen, Swain, Vagar, Vex, Wukong, Mord, Cat. No. So, yeah, it's literally just Hecarim. Uh, but the problem then with Hecarim is that like it's really hard to go from Hecarim to other melee carries because you're not holding any of the connecting pieces, right? Mm -hmm. So, I think you're, you're like playing around the Nila is really good here. Um, I do think if you want to play around the Nila, around on, like this melee stuff in general, I think it's actually pretty important that one of two things is happening. One, you're you're playing to either spike super hard on stage three on three two because you know that that's when you can. I played a game of Nila today where like I, I rolled really deep on three two to hit the Nila two because that's when you can be really strong, right? Um, again, there's not any like transition to you're probably not transitioning to Hecarim from that spot. You can kind of play on Hecarim and then like like hold a Collies and get into Warrior that way, but it's still awkward. Um, so Anila feels like a really good way into Warrior, but you need to play around Anila when she's strong, which, again, like roll with stage three, hit Anila two, win up stage three, it feels really good. You don't have to worry about trying to transition to a three cost carry, then you can go right to eight. Or the other one is that you just are strong enough to go right to eight anyways, right? And like four one or something. You have like an Econ Augment maybe, or like probably not an Econ Augment if you're playing this stuff, because again, I think this stuff works really well with like more power oriented Augments. But you just maybe it's like a scuttle puddle game or something, right? Like I love playing this stuff in scuttle puddle uh, or any like high econ galaxy uh, galaxy portal um, <laughs> because it's really easy to take these like higher power like more selfish combat oriented augments and still get there, right? We talked a little bit about um, mm -hmm. last week about how sometimes augments enable boards and how, for example, like that Randuin's one enables shapeshifter to be played more, but also stuff like cat being rerollable pretty much only when you have like um like the a, a very econ oriented one because it's really hard to hit her other the, that was that augment example that i gave you where i played cat carry where it was um uh it was the one where like you click like you level up and then when you level up you get money and like a free reroll or something right or like every time you level up you hit a get a reroll so that one enables cat because you're just able to level up which she really wants to do but also hit d at the same time which she also really wants to do and you can't do both at once normally right so sometimes augments that really enable certain things and that's that's one of the situations where like like augments portals can very very much enable a certain comp it's not as obvious i think uh, on like econ ones you're like oh i get extra money it doesn't mean you want to do anything in particular maybe it makes you want a fast nine um it can make you want to just fast eight on like really powerful augments like combat oriented ones so that's something to consider uh, in spots like like this where again one of those things if you get stuck on seven or you get to eight with like not any gold in a spot like this it gets really hard because you kind of are forced to play around whichever one you hit which again can be like titan's gwen um so those are those are the real spots where you want to be okay. looking out for like fine vintage and stuff yeah that's the tldr <laughs> so here i'm thinking unified primary and then inspiring epitaph like as a backup yeah, I'd say that like, you can reroll Unified and or United rather than reroll Epitaph and see and probably end up on Unified.
yeah, I think Unified looks looks probably the best there. Martyr's really good on shapeshifters, right? Yeah, yeah. If you were to play like some front to back shapeshifter thing, it would have been Martyr would have been really really nice for sure. But I think when you're playing around warriors, you don't have to worry about it too much. Like like the you know Gwen and Fiora both obviously love the armor and MR. So, so we'll for example, for oh yeah, so I think here, on I, I think yeah. on three three one even I think you can you can roll for it if you want you can roll for like you can, obviously want to scout and see what the matchups look like and see if you can potentially beat the person that you lost yeah. to, but if you can beat them by like leveling looking for a charm looking for Anila too I think that's a really good spot to do that. Because mm -hmm. right, because then you're like super high tempo throughout the rest of the stage. Sure, you lose a lot of money, but you make that all back, and then you don't have to worry about going bot two ever really. Um, because you do have like an okay amount of money here, but you're probably not super likely to hit a ton of stuff on eight still. Like you're gonna hit maybe like one of them, right? But not be able to might not be the right one still. Right. Well, that's your to get this crazy. Fiora. Yeah. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that looks that looks fantastic. So then here I was also wondering like, do I move the items over right away? It makes me much stronger right now yep yeah I think you also do i slam the gs or i think uh i think you can reforge the gs if you want i think like, you okay. probably really want bt last item right um all right sorry i meant like slam. I, I think you can slam the gs and keep it on bench i don't think you want a damage item here for sure though i think you definitely want something I mean, it makes you can if you're going you're planning to go for a warrior so i guess it's probably fine actually but uh, warriors do get a ton of damage amp already so gs doesn't feel like crazy good on them in my mm -hmm. opinion um so something like like one line so like IE. Have, like, IE or... yeah IE or like just more healing than the bt or... would be really oh, good actually, as well I, have uh, uh, I think we like, go healing? extra healing yeah ie is also again really good but you don't want to stack up too too much on the extra damage amp um i, I played a game of six warriors six blaster with uh on a flexible thing the other day mm -hmm. I had, like like a bunch of warriors spats a bunch of blaster spats in my Trist, which, you know, I had a Warrior Spat Tristana with six Blaster and six Warrior in. And in theory, that does a ton of damage, right? But the problem is that all that damage was just going into damage amp. And so it actually wasn't going very hard at all because it was just a lot of, like, redundant stats. So just be careful of that. Um, like, be careful, like, making, like, like wanting to make, um, I always call it Trap Claw, Guard Breaker or, uh, or Giant Slayer. <laughs> when you're playing around something like Warrior, that's a lot of flat damage. Yeah, same with, with Blasters, right? It's why, like, IE Varus is much better than, like, gs varus right because you want the multipl multiplication going on so i'm thinking keeping the rod for gwen there as opposed to cloak or bow yeah that sounds good i think with the fiora already you definitely can feel pretty comfortable just looking to, to play some gwen fiora stuff Big grab bag looks fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that's right. Before that, though, like long distance pal seems okay with the Titans. If I'm going for the warrior combo, it reminds me of like, what was it, Kaisa and like uh, Yasuo from set whatever nine? Yeah, or the, the, the Darius Cat stuff too, right? Yeah, 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 with Noxus. There, yeah. Yeah, no, I think okay. LDP would probably be fine. I think LDP's been in a weird spot for a while where it feels hard to click but it actually is probably fine in, in a ton of spots like I, I think here for sure with unified as well right you just get extra armor navar as well i think i think unified or well, well ldp would be totally fine but i also you roll the other ones yeah. first uh, high priority always with this augment with this first augment is looking for more items so yep yeah i really wish they very... would fix the the titans thing for ap <laughs> yeah right it feels really. Well, I guess all the hero augments are AP oriented for the two costs, so maybe that just breaks those. breaks them. Yeah, maybe like one point five or something. I, it feels really hard to kill a bone now in AP, like very hard unless you're making shiv. Yeah, like, I guess red buff exists, which is nice, but not not the best feeling in the world, I would say. What's your take yeah. on slamming the BT for Gwen and? Doing the crown, I guess crown guard could also go on Gwen. Yeah, I think BT crown guard Gwen point. actually sounds super good right now. <laughs> okay, so you'd hold that. Yeah, I think that's probably probably pretty good. 
I think, yeah, yeah, I think definitely think you want BT and Crown Guard on your Gwen. Like, like, honestly, you can just put the Black Cleaver on her, too. Like, that's totally fine. <laughs> <laughs> and then just kind of devote everything else to just being Spore Arms. The weird thing with your Spore Arms so far is that you haven't gotten anything, like, super selfish, which is which is rough, yeah. right? You just kind of been rolling it a bit. Because, like, you obviously want, like, Knight's Vows and Aegises and Zeke's and, and that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. And, and, like, the, uh, the and Banshee's Veils and stuff. But where you're not hitting that... I, you know, I think it's probably important to just make sure that you are getting items for your carries. You can keep them on the bench, I guess, until you find something to put them on. Because you can put them on cat right now, but it's not doing a ton. Uh, this is the awkward spot we talked about a little bit, where, like, because you kind of had a really weak stage three, you were forced to play for, like, a faster eight. But you didn't have enough gold to make that faster eight happen. And so that's why it's a little bit better there to just play the stronger stage three. And then, you know, if, you like, if you're Neela 2, you're probably stable, you know, maybe up to this point already. Uh, maybe you, you probably are like right. like 70 hp right now or something and then you obviously you have less gold maybe you're going eight right now instead of two rounds ago but you have a lot more leeway and there, there's less stuff being super contested i think as well this set compared to last set because again there's like less hyper optimal comps at least uh you know this early in the set so it's totally fine to not be like super hard committed earlier or not to like, like race people to your board basically mm-hmm. would you have Put the BT and Crown Guard on Cat there instead of Gwen, and then use the item remover once I hit Gwen two. I think it's on Gwen one still. I, I can't really get a feel for Cat, but I don't, I'm not like the biggest believer. You probably can do either way, honestly. But I think this is totally fine. Okay, but you definitely yeah, want to slam yeah. the Crown Guard. Yep, yeah, yeah crown, crown Guard should probably be on your. I'm not probably should definitely be on your board here because it is a really good item okay. for Gwen, right? And again, it's like yeah. as much AP as a Rabadon's, so. And you don't really mm-hmm. care about the damage amp because again you have so much damage amp from your uh from your your trait. I think a lot of the stuff this game just has to do with like just little optimizations in terms of of getting a little value out of your items, as well as I think the big thing is just wanting that that stage three to be like a really high impact one. Or like like you know, just kinda of, that's where you want to kind of flip the flip the the script a little bit on on yeah on how strong your board so really was. Because key thing was rolling on three two to hit that Neela two. Or three yeah. one even, okay. I think so. Yeah, I think the two. I guess you can go a little bit before that as well. Like I think at the end of stage two or after stage two carousel, and you took the Hodge. I don't think you need to slam it yet. And I think you can wait and try to be weaker for the last two fights if you want, very reasonably. And then if you do that and you 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 know manage to lose streak that, you don't have to roll for Neela anymore. You can kind of just go for a really fast eight because you have way more money. Right? Because you immediately lost again on three one. So you can you can do that for sure. Um, that's one way to do it. But if you don't do that. And you go for the two win at the end of stage two after the after two five carousel, then I think you do need to look for the stronger stage three because you don't have the econ at that point to actually do the fast eight. And so you'd much rather just get the you know, like the the stronger stage three to get there. You get you get there later, but you get there with a lot more leeway and, and you know, you're you again, you're like guaranteed top four at that spot where this spot is you know, you're strong, but you still need to take one two and it's a little bit risky just because you don't have everything upgraded. And you're low HP. So in the in the situation where if I had lost streaked fully in stage two and then gone for a really fast eight, are you referring to like a four one yep. push to level eight? Okay. Yeah, you probably okay. I mean you, you hit stuff naturally enough where you're probably not like you're probably about the same HP, honestly. Um, right? It, it, you won two fights in stage and stage two, but you stage two HP we've talked about this is, is HP loss is very low right now. Probably too low. Um and so you can just kind of sack a little bit, float your way to, to four one, go eight, hit a little bit sooner maybe. Uh, again, I I think that that works. You can all and there is a third way where like you you lose the end of stage two and then you look to roll on three two anyways and just look for the Neela. If you have Neela pair and you feel like you're on the cusp of getting really strong, I think that is very reasonable because um, then you have like a little bit more money. You have a little less HP, but you have a little bit more money and it's like a similar spot to if you win the last two fights on stage two and then you roll. Um, I think what the awkward part is with, with what happened in this game is that you actually have to roll in three one this game, if you're going to roll, because you you won. Why three one over three two? So you won two two five and two six, right? Oh, you and so you want to keep I that see. streak, yeah. So you want to I keep see. that streak going, and so the, the awkward that made it a little bit more awkward and like a little bit more punishing. Where if you lose two mm-hmm. five and two six, you have two ways you can go. One again, you can lose streak through stage three as well. No, no lose streak, but like have a middling stage three. Uh, or you can then stabilize on 3-2 instead of 3-1 because you're going to lose 3-1 as well. Uh, and then that keeps that loss streak going. Then you can, you know, flip the turret, flip the 
you know, you can, you can make your board strong from there. It was just, this was a really hard game to navigate from the end of stage two, just because you weren't in a spot, you're in a spot where like you needed a good amount of money. Not you need to like play a really efficient game with your money. Cause you weren't going to have a ton of money ever, ever this game, but you had a really, you had a lot of resources to make a board really strong if you hit the unit quality. And so a lot of it was just navigating it in, the, in a way to hit, actually get that unit quality. Right. And you can see here, right. We we're, were so close to it. Um, but you know, it's Nasus one, it's Gwen one. And, and if you hit those, it's really good, but it's also like a maybe a little bit too little too late now that you're, you needed them a little bit sooner. Right. Um, mm -hmm. cause one life is very volatile, obviously. And so right. because that NSH two happened, it became a very awkward situation where you had to make the call on three, one, in my opinion, people might, may, you know, people might say different things, but I think on three, one, you have to make the call to get stronger. And in most situations here to, to actually keep up with the game and to, to look for a top four. But I think it's really hard to top one ever, unless you you know get a pretty higher level eight after that end of stage two, it, you know, unless maybe you get like a crazy long streak and, and you're just naturally some stuff on stage two as well. But that, yeah, that's how you open yourself up to, to, you know, higher placements again, a after having to like commit to like a top four ish kind of thing there is, is you play that very aggressively and you say, okay, I'm winning through stage three. I'm going to put myself in a spot where I can hire all these things. And if I do, then I'm good. If I don't, then maybe I just go forth and it's fine. Okay. So here with these support items, like I know spite was redesigned, but it seems like it just still sucks, right? Like, it's a little, yeah, it's weird. It, I'm not a big spite fan still. Uh, if anything, <laughs> it seems like it only makes sense if it's like a mirror melee matchup or maybe against Jax, like, but it, if, if the Jax doesn't have QSS. Yeah, it's, it can be good into the, some of the tanks that really want to give themselves shielding and stuff and healing, right? Like if you stun a Taric or stun a Nasus or whatever, like sometimes, maybe not Nasus so much, but like a Taric or like, what's the other shieldy guy? Like Rakan. It can open up a window to kill them for sure. But it's like, a, not, it's, two seconds is like a decent amount of time, I guess. But like, that unit's almost never going to be getting targeted and dying before like the melee carry next to this fight, right? Which is the really awkward part of it for me. So not a great item right. still, I don't think. If you see it on a on a, okay. on a golem, it's no longer like, you know, you're going, you're playing for fifth, which it kind of felt like before. Yeah. It's just it's just <laughs> not amazing. But yeah, I think like Knight's Vow though here looks really good. Randuin's looks okay. Zeke's is probably not amazing, but I think Randuin's and Knight's Vow are both definitely acceptable. Probably more Knight's Vow just because you already have the um, the Armour and MR from, uh, whatchamacallit. And you obviously already have Omnivamp as well, but the extra little of HP yeah. is really decent and then also more omni bamp is never a bad thing okay the situation where zeke's would be or is there a scenario where zeke's would be better if if i had gotten an early zeke's that would have been better right yeah i think i think early zeke's would be fine i think in this situation like zeke's is a little awkward just because you only I, I think zeke's feels a lot better in like like the backline ones or if you have like more units doing things right now the only two units doing things on your board are really gwen and and um cat technically maybe right but mostly it's just gonna be gwen and it's gonna be fiora and, and between those two it's like way more fiora than gwen so zeke's is just like a little less selfish and it's a little less power budget built mm -hmm. into like the you know the few units next to it um so i just yeah i think knight's vow is just generally gonna be better when you're playing melee stuff if you're playing like a bunch of backline blasters then zeke's looks like crazy right or like kale for example like backline kale stuff last set mm-hmm and this is that slightly awkward spot, right? We just talked about where it's like, you can't quite, you don't quite have enough gold to hit everything you need. So it's like, you're so close to being really, really strong. It's just not, you're not quite there. Yeah. And so, it, you know, you're winning fights, but it is a little volatile. So. Yeah, this is the kind of spot with charms where, like, you definitely want to be really, really cognizant of what you actually beat when you don't. So if you thought, if you think you beat this guy every single time, then, you know, definitely don't worry. Don't, don't even buy that charm, honestly, if you don't think you need to, needed to beat this guy. Because it didn't actually really do anything for you, right? It was two gold to make it so that, like, your con doesn't get CC'd. Um, yeah. And if, it, if, it, if you think you do need something to beat that guy, then you, like, you definitely are willing to sell Nasus and sell Gwen to try to get a charm because... You're on one life at this point. Being able to sell right. pairs to look for charms is definitely an important thing. Mm -hmm. 
particularly like lower value pairs. Like I think selling Nasus pair here is, is like very, very reasonable if you are looking for um, for a better charm. And the whole lobby's just playing warriors. Huh? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that yeah, I think it's a very reasonable. That jinx, but... Very close. Yeah, that was yeah. a jax. Tell you what. <laughs> <laughs> very. I think that's a very reasonable fifth, though. I mean, I, I think it definitely wasn't. It wasn't poorly played. It was just like it was a tough spot from the end of stage two, and you have to be really cognizant of how to dig yourself out of that um, immediately. Mm -hmm. It's more so you have to be like. It's, it's twofold where if you get in that spot you have, like you are still able to dig yourself out of that for sure like on on early stage three you can make it make decisions that that get you out of there but even more so like when you're in a spot where you need that much gold then it is really important to make sure that you are you know finishing out your loss streak on stage two and, and paying attention to you know you can you take the hodge that's totally fine i think what you what it was that you wanted the hodge and then you're like okay well i already have the hodge and i'll just make a stronger board it's okay but again you can make that decision but then you have to make the decision on three one and if you the the easier decision, like the smoother one, is just like take the Hodge component, but just keep losing, and it's totally fine. Right. Okay. Um, cool. In hindsight, there's a scenario where I maybe cooked the the Titans and not played it because it just is so much more narrow. Yeah, you totally could. I mean, I I don't think you had anything that was. I guess Warwick with Titans is like you know playable. I don't think you had anything like crazy insane with the Titans. I think the the one problem with with um with not making Titans there is that you lose a lot of direction because obviously it is narrow narrower, but it also is a really really strong direction with fine vintage to have a Titans because you're like Titans plus um right. Titans plus fine vintage is like a very very strong win condition in general. Um, I think it's fine to make the Titans, but I think again it's just just being very careful and being honest in the fact that like if you're gonna make that, you need to make sure that you are really heavily understanding how much gold you need on eight and and how to get there like, i think like olaf feels really the reason that people don't like olaf right now is that games like this happen because i think olaf is very good um i think it's just that like you really have to have the exact right situation and like navigate it very carefully and then once you get there he is gonna 1v10 some boards or he also loses to jacks but you know <laughs> <laughs> All right. play some jacks <laughs> cool What's your prediction on whether Jax gets nerfed, like, and when? <laughs> oh, he is getting nerfed, like, very... I, I think he's going to start getting played a lot more, and then I think he... I don't know if right. he's going to get B-patched, but I could see him getting B-patched. I, I mean, he is he is a... Once it starts being, like, three Jaxes in a lobby, that's when he's going to get B-patched, probably. <laughs> yeah. So the question is, does that happen before the weekend? <laughs> I don't think so. I think I think people... I think people aren't going to catch on in the next two days enough. People are uh, some people are already playing Jax for sure, and people are going to be like scouring the stats and seeing that Jax three is like a you know a three point seven. But I think uh, I yeah. think our Jax is safe for a, a day or two. <laughs> <laughs>